Arcane Season 2 is about to premiere on Netflix November 9th and I thought we'd take a look back on exactly what happened in Season 1. Hi, my name is Dario and this is my first YouTube video ever, kinda. In this new channel I'm going to be reviewing and just talking about my favorite movies and TV series so please consider liking and subscribing and comment below what you thought of this video. Alright, let's get to Arcane. The series opens with probably one of the best pilots I've seen in terms of world building and character setup. So let's start at the beginning. We start with a flashback to the day Vi and Powder lost their parents. They're in the middle of a war zone with destruction and chaos all around them. Then they are found by Vander. He takes them and that's really all we get from that flashback. Of course, later on we'll find out that this was a result of Vander's attack to try and liberate the Undercity from the oppression that they live under. But this attack came with a price that changed the way he thinks. We'll get into that a little bit later. Then after this flashback, we meet the kids. Young Vi, Milo, Clagger, and of course, Powder. And this is the inciting incident for the whole show. When they break into Jace's lab, Powder accidentally sets off an explosion that leads to every event in the story to be put into motion. The enforcers are looking for the culprit of the explosion, needing someone to make an example of, of which leads to Vander giving himself up and getting captured by Soko, then eventually dying, and Vi being the one arrested and sent to prison for it. Jace gets kicked out of the academy because of the explosion, but then he meets Victor, who helps him bring Hextech to reality. So this is quite the inciting incident. Inciting is inciting incident, you know what I'm talking about. But going back to the scene, this is also the introduction of the kids. Right away we can tell that Vi is the leader, and that she cares for her little sister Powder. Then we have Milo, which he is perhaps the most tragic character in my opinion of the entire show. I saw him kind of like Sokka from Avatar in season one. He's young, he's eager, but he's also rude and complains a lot. And he thinks he's better than he actually is. Which, this is the perfect start to a character so they can have an actual character growth. The difference is that Sokka gets the time to learn from his mistakes and grow to be able to utilize his abilities. That doesn't quite happen with Milo, which is quite sad in my opinion, but we'll get to that. Here we begin with a flashback to young Jace and his mother being saved by a magician displaying the power of Arcane. This is one of the coolest scenes in the show and honestly, I hope they dig more into this side of the magic in season two. This season really focuses on the magic being used to create tech, but I'd love to go back and get the origins of how this magic is actually supposed to be used. But anyway, from here on, we see what a visionary Jace is with his plans on improving people's lives by figuring out how to harness this power. We also see Vander's point of view on why he refuses to fight back. I was angry, just like you. I led us across this bridge, thinking things could change. If I hadn't, your parents would still be alive. But who are you willing to lose? Milo? Clagger? Powder? He's currently acting as a peacekeeper between both cities, but some people see this as weakness, which brings up this dilemma, uh, which is actually one of the biggest themes in the show. When you're oppressed, is fighting back worth the risk of losing the people you love? In this episode, we see both the beginning of Great Potential and the end of Great Potential. Jace is finally able to show that his tech works, so the potential advancement in this technology is finally put into place and are able to show Professor Heimerdinger and the council that this magic can be harnessed. You've actually done it. So the potential gets realized. On the other hand, we have the potential of Milo and Clagger being able to grow up and become the people that they are meant to be, but that gets cut short. After Vander gets captured by Silco, the kids go to break him out. Of course, Powder gets left behind because as Milo puts it, she's a jinx. But she's so insistent in helping that she goes anyway and is able to finally make one of her bombs work by putting some of those blue rocks in it. And of course, they actually end up working too well, in fact. And boom. Milo and Clagger die. 
This actually has to be one of the most shocking episodes of TV I think I've ever seen. In fact, when I first watched the show, I refused to believe that they were actually dead. I mean, how could they be? What kind of show sets up characters with clear path, motivation, and just end them? I mean, maybe I'm just too shaded from every other show where no main characters ever die. No matter how they make it seem, they always find a way to come back one way or another. So yeah, for the next couple of episodes, I definitely expected some big reveal that they somehow survived. But to my pleasant surprise, they didn't. They actually died, which is wild. The other potential that dies in this episode is Vander. He was keeping somewhat of a peace between the two sides, but without him, an actual chance of peace dies too. And of course, there's the birth of Jinx. The complete mental breakdown that she has because of what she did is kind of crazy. This is the epitome of a villain origin story. In this episode, we have a time jump. By this point, Jace is famous and the head of technological advancements. Hextech is a success. They were able to build a fast traveling system as well as a bunch of tech powered by the blue rocks or the blue, blue spheres. But they very quickly are pointing out that the technology in the wrong hands can bring destruction. And Professor Heimerdinger really takes the lead in being the voice of reason. He has lived for over 300 years, so he knows exactly how things can go wrong because he has seen it happen before. Jinx gets her hands on the blue rocks and uses her for her inventions. So obviously it didn't take long for this to land in the wrong hands. This whole time, Caitlyn has been trying to figure out what's going on in the Undercity and who's behind all the crime. So she joins forces with Vi, she takes her out of prison so Vi can take her to the Undercity so she can see what's really going on there. I think Caitlyn and Vi being paired up together makes a lot of sense. It's almost like they're each other's counterparts. Like Kaylin is Vi if she grew up in the top side and the other way around. And it seems like there might be a romantic chemistry there too, but we're gonna have to wait until season two to find out. Then we see a little bit of Victor's past. Of course, the newest development is Hexcore, which is the biological side to Hextech. Victor is trying to use it to heal himself, but again, Heimerdinger warns them that this is a bad idea because he has seen this destroy a civilization before. You must destroy it. What? I love the point that they're trying to make with Heimerdinger. It's definitely a good idea to remember history, otherwise we're doomed to make the same mistakes. But at the same time, we shouldn't be afraid to look at the future and better ourselves. And that's the dichotomy between Jace and Heimerdinger. Jace is a visionary always looking to the future and trying new things, while Heimerdinger seems to only be focused on the past, terrified to try anything that might cause what he has seen. Eventually, Vi and Caitlyn find the firelights, led by Echo. We go into their base and we see the wall which represents the price of freedom. Everyone they've lost fighting for what is right. I love that they have powder there, even though she's still alive. Everyone keeps telling Vi that she's too far gone. She's jinxed now. But Vi is not ready to give up on her yet. Now we're heading into the big finale, and this is when things start to come together. After pleading with the council to fight against Silco's regiment and being denied, Vi and Jace join forces to take down Silco's shimmer factories. They have an awesome takedown which leads to the death of a child. This forces Jace to finally face the consequences of everything he's been doing in the top side. On the other hand, after being kicked out of the cancel by Jace, Heimerdinger runs into Echo in the Undercity. He takes him to the Firelight's base where he can see what's going on there. It seems like they're going to join forces, but that's really where it lives off. We're gonna have to wait until next season to find out. In the finale, Jace and Silco meet to try to make a peace. Silco asks for sons or sounds? I don't even know. He asks for their independence so he can run it. Jace demands for Jinx because he needs somebody to pay for the crimes they've done. Get me Jinx and I'll give you your nation of Zon. 
Now Jinx comes to find out what Silco was asked for and she thinks he's about to betray her. So she captures Silco, Vi and Caitlyn and now the fight for Jinx is on. Here we see the mental state that Jinx is in and man she's bad. She's still hunted by Milo and Clagger. She's completely paranoid and seems to have no idea what's wrong and what's right. It's a great depiction of the angel and devil on your shoulder. Vi is telling her that she's still powdered, that they still have a chance to be sisters. And then there's Silco telling her that Jinx is perfect and begging her to still be his daughter. In the end, she sort of chooses Vi because she shoots Silco and kills him, though she's heartbroken about it. And Silco still tells her that he would never give her up. I never would have given you to them. Not for anything. In a strange way, this is kind of sweet because even though Silco is obviously a terrible person, he actually loved her and she loved him too. Which is why even though she kills Silco, she still doesn't go with Vi. And then in a crazy turn of events, as the council is voting yes to give the Undercity its independence, Jinx launches a rocket straight at them and it hits them. And that's it, that's the end. All right, that's it. That's the end of season one. That's the entire season one of Arcane, kinda. I mean, I actually left a few things out. I mean, I kinda have to, otherwise this video would be like 20 hours long, but this is the basics. So, are you excited for Arcane season two? What do you think is gonna happen? Make sure to let me know in the comments down below. And that's it for me. Thanks for watching.